Well, God bless you. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, we invite everybody to come online. Come on in the room tonight. Amen. It is time for our midweek impactful uh, word of God for your life. Amen. I like to call them kingdom nuggets uh, in the faith. Amen. Uh, so come on in. Go ahead and uh, get everybody together. Amen. We want to thank God for you. And we pray that you've had a marvelous day today. Amen. Whether it's been at work. Maybe you're on vacation enjoying yourself, amen. Or maybe you were just at home, amen, enjoying kingdom living, amen. So thank God for you, amen, in all your respective places, amen. We want to thank you for the East Coast, West Coast, amen, uh, up north, Indiana. We want to call them all in, all the way down to Key West. We want to thank God for you, amen. Listen, I'm Pastor O, amen, uh, here, the senior pastor here at Faith Victory Christian Center. And I want to thank each of you for joining me on tonight. Amen. I don't know about you, man, but I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. Enjoying the lifestyle of a kingdom citizen. Amen. And that's what we want you to do as well. Amen. So listen, just a moment. Amen. About 60 seconds. I'm going to be able to pray, declare the word of God. And then we're going to jump into uh, tonight for our, our, our study. Amen. Just going to get some nuggets uh, for you that I promise you going to be a blessing uh, into your life. Amen. Now listen, Pastor Vanessa taught a very elegant, amazing, amazing uh, a lesson on this past Sunday. Amen. So I know you're still fired up. Amen. Still eating uh, from that word. Amen. So we want you to join us midweek. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Go ahead and tag. Share with somebody. I know she, like you always say, get your phone. Tag her. Go ahead and let her know, hey, look, I need to share this with you. So that's the word of God. I promise you, you're learning something. Amen. Anytime God shows up, you're going to learn something that you did not uh, did not know before. And he's going to impart more inside of your life. So thank God for you. Amen. Go ahead. And let him know. Let's get ready. Pastor O is getting ready to teach the word of God on tonight. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, Father God, unto thy name. And God, we thank you now in the name of Jesus for the word of God that's going to go forward tonight. It's going to be a blessing to the lives of the hearers, and not only hearers, but to the doers of the word of God. And we pray you're going to live your best. That's it. You're going to live your best life because you're living the kingdom lifestyle. Amen. And God, we give you praise for and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So thank God for you. Amen. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us. Amen. Midweek, 30 minutes of impactful teaching that's going to be a true blessing inside of your life. Amen. Now, we're still talking about, man, kingdom living. Amen. It's the lifestyle of kingdom citizenship because once you make Jesus Lord of your life and listen, you come inside the kingdom of God. And this is this is a real place. Amen. This is a kingdom. We've we talked about it in times past about the kingdom of God, amen, where we declare and decree and we've just believed the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to make heaven here on earth. I'm going to have heaven here on earth, amen. Is that realistic, Pastor? Absolutely realistic, amen. You not, listen, you can live this kind of way. God has already told you this is the way you're going to live, amen. And you got people here. As citizens of the kingdom of God, living the God kind of life, amen. And that's what we want to do. My passion uh, as a pastor is to make sure as many as as many as people as possible will live the kingdom lifestyle, amen. That's the country where you originated from. That is the country where you reside. And so we want to understand that we got rights, we got guarantees, man, uh, that's based off the word of God. And because of that, amen, I'm not worried about this government system that yet now we live in down here in the earth. Amen. But I, I'm, my hate, all, all, everything about me is from another place. Amen. Matthew 6 and 33, we're going to read from Amplified for time's sake. It says, but seek, but first and foremost, most importantly, if I was says, amen, I want you to strive after his kingdom. Notice his kingdom, not another kingdom, but his kingdom. And watch this, and his righteousness. And you're going to hear me talk about that a little bit later on, if not tonight, in further uh, developments of the series, man. When you understand that God set us up to have a series, I mean, just an amazing lifestyle. And when you get the articulation and the revelation on how he did this, man, it's going to eradicate I mean, the way you think, the way you used to uh, look at things, I've changed 
my whole demeanor, amen, based off of this revelation that God gives you, amen. So he says, now his kingdom, his righteousness, which is his way of, uh, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God and all these things is going to be given unto you, amen. So I love this part. He says, all these things are going to be added unto me. Now, you hear me in times past talk about, the Bible begins to say, hey, even the Gentile seek these things. What are they seeking? The car, the cash, the crib, and the clothes. Those are the things that you really need for your life. Amen. And so he said, now they seek after that thing, but I don't want you to go after and seek those things the way they do it. I've already planned it. Watch this. God's plan, God's purpose, and, God, and, 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 and God's prosperity. He said, I've already uh, uh, put all this stuff available for my people. If you're a kingdom citizen, all this stuff belongs to you. You've just been going at it the wrong way. Oh, my God. When you get this revelation that you've been chasing out the stuff God told you never to chase, and this stuff will run you down, that's what the Bible begins to talk about. It'll overcome you, overtake you, and, and run you down. That's what he's talking about. But God has a system of laws and principles and commandments that we must follow. And he says, now, all this stuff's going to happen. You're seeking after it. I know you need it. I know you need it, but I've already worked that plan out for you. Now, listen, that, get, that gets rid of stress inside of life. Now, you're not designed for that. You, you might be stressed out, but it's, but God says, listen, I got a system. I got a plan. I've already figured it all out for you. And all you need is just the revelation. Because once you get that revelation, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I've been, I've been stressing about this stuff. Yeah. And God says, I've, I've already planned it. I've already made it available for you. You just must seek after this. In other words, another definition of that seek after, that means you got to go after that thing with all your heart, all your passion, like life or death. That's what it means. I'm going after this thing. Like my life depends on this thing. That's what I'm going to be able to do. Amen. So he goes on in the key. And listen to me tonight when I tell you about the key. Amen. Everybody shout the key. If you hear me talk about keys, the key is his righteousness. Can you everybody say it? His righteousness, not my way, but you're saying, God, your way. And that's the problem, amen. You don't get these things, God, he's telling you inside the kingdom of God. And that's probably about some of the reasons why a lot of us believers haven't received the thing that God said rightfully belongs to you. He's got a guarantee on this thing, but you don't have them because you've been seeking out the thing the wrong way. You've been thinking, well, God will understand. He is, the, the Bible didn't say that. He says his righteousness. In other words, his way. Another definition of righteousness means to be to be aligned, realigned properly with authority. To be realigned properly with authority. When sin entered the world, we got off track. We was not aligned properly with authority. So God says his righteousness, if I follow those things, it's going to properly align us with authority. Now watch it. If I'm properly aligned with authority, I can receive from that authority. Oh my God. So if you find out your pipeline, you're not receiving from the government agency, which is the kingdom of God, then there's, there's something wrong on the inside of your life that does not have you properly aligned. I found out when I'm properly aligned with the kingdom standards, God's way of operation and his agency, and, and I'm in know his principle, his law, watch this, I can receive from it. Oh, yeah, that's good. You can receive from it, amen? So I have to make the necessary adjustment. Now, we know, 3 John, uh, 3 John 2, that the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper, amen? So God ties our prosperity to the development of my soul. Now, we know our soul is made up of five components. It's my mind, imagination, my intellect, my emotions, and my will. To the degree I'm willing to make the necessary adjustment to develop those things on the inside of my life, the Bible says I'm going to do well. So in other words, I have, to, I have to line up my soulless nature to make sure it's properly aligned with the government authority. Amen. Yeah, that's your, that's our responsibility to make sure my soulless nature is properly aligned with the government authority so I can receive from that authority. Amen. And listen to me, you want to be properly aligned in, in alignment, amen, because it's going to rain down things inside of your life. So Isaiah 1 and 18, we talked about this before. He says, now if I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. Uh, good of the land. Job 36 and 11 says, if I obey and serve him, I'm going to spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. All that stuff sounds so good, so wonderful. 
It's amazing. Now, we got all these passages of scripture, and you have to ask yourself, man, I, supposed, I, I am supposed to be living the way God told me to live. If I want to know what that lifestyle is like, then I have to study the kingdom. The maker or the manufacturer of things is the only one that can be able to explain and break down to me how I'm supposed to be living. Now, we found out, now remember now, we, got, we can't be shaped and formed by this age or this culture. I got a culture that I come from. From the kingdom of, kingdom of heaven, God, I have a culture. And my culture is faith. I mean, that's our language, amen? And that's the reason why we fight so hard. You got to be in the faith because that's just kingdom language. Whenever we don't speak or talk faith, where you from? I don't, I don't know where you from. Where you, you, you from you from the earth? Where, where you from? You, you from Russia? The Dominican Republic? Where, where you from? Because faith is my language. Now, because heaven is only going to respond to the kingdom language. And the kingdom language is going to be faith. So I got to be in the faith so that I can I can, I can can talk my real language. Amen? One of the things you'll learn later on, return to, I'm telling you tonight, return to your original language. Amen? You've got sidetracked. You talking, you talking, a lot of people talking about talking to you, No, you talking world system. I need you to return to your former language. Amen? So Hebrews 10 and 36 says, you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, watch this, you might receive the promises. So the promises are there. As a kingdom citizen, I must align with God's lordship by aligning my life with what he has said in his word. So I have to make necessary adjustments along the way. Amen. Now, I know we listen to celebrities and all these other folk talking. I don't care what Reverend Pharaoh said. If you're not properly aligned with authority, you can pray, you can do what you got to do, but you're not going to be able to receive the things that God says that you can have. He clearly states, after you've done the will of God, when are you going to receive the promise? After I've done the will of God. You're not going to receive all the promises of God without aligning yourself with his will. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. So there has to be necessary adjustments uh, that I have to make in my life. Now, this is where we left off last time, amen, before we got cut off. Believers are not being taught the importance of personal righteousness in their daily life. And when that doesn't happen, amen, uh, I always tell people, I don't want to go to church. Uh, I hate to use the word church because church means the, the call out ones. Uh, but I'll use that terminology. Uh, and be moved emotionally. Now, listen to me. You can have emotions, but I don't want to be moved by my emotions. I need substance. I need the word of God. I need to know how this thing really works. Remember, I got to know what, how this thing really works. Now, I'm going to show you why, why this is vitally important. When you go back and study, uh, what's his name, uh, Solomon. God comes to Solomon and he says to Sol Solomon, you know, ask what you want. What you want. Now, listen to what Solomon does. Very amazing. This is kingdom. This is how you're going you to know about kingdom living here. Be like Solomon. Solomon says, you know what, God? I, I don't want you to give me nothing. Now, what, what most folks would do is God say, what you want? They're going to start talking about the car, the cash, the crib, and the clothes. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't miss it. Solomon says to God, God, I want to know how this thing works. <laughs> Listen to me. Solomon says to God, God, kingdom living. I want to know how the system, how this works. Oh, my God. See, the key is if I can understand how it works, I can work the principle. I can work the commandment. And I'll get everything it says that I can have. Instead of God just giving me something, but if I understand his, how a thing works, the, remember, I want to understand everything about the manufacturer. I want to know how I was built. I want to understand how I was made. I want to understand how I am supposed to function in life. I want to understand all about how the entire kingdom of God works. The system works. Oh, my God. And that ought to be your attitude. How does this thing work? Because if I, if I can figure that out, Oh, my life is going to be so amazing. I thank God for teaching me, line upon line, precept upon precept, how this thing is going to work. Amen. So he gets over here um, and uh, 
uh, uh, uh, Romans 7 and 14. I want to show you something. Now, this is very, because remember, Solomon says, God, forget all that. I need, if you Can you teach me how it works? I don't need a million dollars. How does a kingdom work? Now watch, watch this right here in, in Romans 7 and 14. Let's prove my point here. For we know not that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. For that which I allow not, for what I would and that I would not do, but what I hate that I do. I don't want to do it. This is possible. Say, so I don't want to do it, but I don't know how to. If then I do that which I would not, I can sit unto the law that is good. Now, then it is no more me that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 18 is the key. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present in me. No, I want to be able to do it, but the how to perform that thing, that which is good, I find not. What Apostle Paul was saying is, hey, look, I'll struggle to the degree because I got no understand how this thing works. But God, if you can teach me how to perform, the how to, that's the key. God, let me know. Teach me the how to. And that's what you want in your life. Kingdom living is all about the how to. I want to understand God. That is why God is more, uh, 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 is more worried about the relationship than your petition. God wants the relation, no relationship, God don't want to hear your petition. So God is more concerned with the relationship that you have with him than you trying to uh, 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 throw up some petition. Amen. So as a result, in other words, because I don't understand how the thing works, I do not experience the blessings, the benefits, the provision, and the prosperity of the kingdom because I live an unrighteous lifestyle that has shut down the access to the things that you're trying to chase after. But if I can be right with God, if I can get properly aligned, get in alignment, it's like your car front in alignment. If you drive a car front in alignment, it's all, I mean, that thing's shaking, going down the road, pulling it every, every, every side because it's all out of alignment. So in, 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 in our life, we have to make a spiritual alignment. And God says, how you stay aligned with me is to maintain my ways, which is his righteousness. Now, this is amazing because God is setting us up. See, the devil is kind of keep us away from that. That's why he said, don't dwell in your flesh because no good thing dwell there because you can get all into your flesh, all in your emotions, get all out of whack. But all you're doing is you're hurting yourself. And the question I have to you tonight, why would you hurt yourself? So I just want to stay properly aligned with the kingdom. That's why God said, don't have no all against nobody. Don't you mess around have no all against nobody because when you do, you're shutting your own self down. How? Be quick to repent. Be quick to forgive, because if I don't do those things, I'm shutting me down. It ain't, it ain't you. You keep doing what you're doing, but I'm not going to shut myself down. Oh, my God. Harboring unforgiveness in your heart, having issues with people. You're shutting your own self down. Devil ain't got to do anything. You, you're doing it to yourself. Amen? So God's desires for every Christian, I mean, not Christian, I'm sorry, every citizen of the kingdom of God, he wants all of us to be free in all things. Can you say in all things? All things, all things complete in all things. My emotion, everything's in check. Won't you be financial free? Everything that, that, that you need, God wants it to be clear. Amen? So in other words, we have to understand there's no uh, need that's too big for God. Amen? Not in the kingdom system. Amen? So in other words, I must keep my pipeline clear. That's it. I don't want nothing clogging up my pipeline with God. That's why he says in, in uh, John 15, he begins to talk about, hey, look, I called you, but you got to stay connected to me. Because if you do, you're going to bear fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. So apart from me, you can do nothing. Listen to what God's telling us. Apart from him, you can do nothing. You'll bear fruit, you'll bear more fruit, and you'll bear much fruit if you stay connected. Everybody shout his righteousness. See? Don't, 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 don't get fooled. Don't get fooled and tricked and get cut off. Because all you're doing is hurting yourself. You're killing yourself. He said, now, if you stay connected to the Father, the Father means source. Who, remember, whoever sorts you must take care of you, must provide for you. And God says, man, I am your source. And apart from me, you apart from me, you would die. Remember, human being, the human species is the only one got a problem with God. Because everybody else stay in the environment. Birds stay connected with the air. They don't fuss with it. They was uh, ordained to fly. They fly. Fish always want to be in the water because they understand that life in the fish is in the water. Only man, the sea said, I'll uh -uh, keep me in the ground. I'm going to reproduce. I got to have soil. I ain't. A seed wants to be in the soil so it can live and produce. 
only man, that human species. I, I don't need God. I, 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 I don't need him. I don't need him. Only man is the only species that, that, that wants to disconnect from God. Isn't that amazing? Even the animals don't think that way. Oh, my God. The fish don't think that way, and the birds don't think that way. Only the human species. Glory be to God. Amen. So, in other words, I got to keep my, I, you have to keep your pipeline clear. Amen. So, the pipeline is always open uh, from God's end. God's not, God's not clocking up anything. He's already kicking out everything from, from the kingdom for you. The only reason why I can't get in your life is because you got, you got it all clocked up. Hallelujah. So, because it's got to be you because God said it's always flowing. The river of the kingdom of God is always flowing. Only you can stop it up, get it all backed up. Amen. Praise be to God. So our lifestyle, whether or not it remains open on our end, that's up to us. Amen. So living righteousness, watch this, righteously keeps our end clear. You need to listen to the night. It keeps the pipeline clear. In other words, realign properly with authority. My pipeline is going to be clear with heaven. Got it? Job uh, 36 and 7. Watch this. He does not take his eyes off the righteous. He enthrones them with kings and exalts them forever. So God's never taken his eyes off of us. Amen? Not only does God protect us, but he lifts us up. In other words, he provides the security. Amen? And enable us to overcome, watch this, every obstacle and meet every challenge that we have in our life. That's why in Psalms 34 and 18, he can say, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Amen? So we should be working hard to keep ourselves in line with God and avoiding anything. And notice I did say anything that would move us out of our position. Amen. You don't want nothing, no alt, no issue, no jealousy, no loss of self-control, no, 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 no spat. You don't want it, whether it be money, you don't want your job, you don't want nothing to keep you from being properly aligned with the kingdom. So, in other words, I can't lie. No, 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 no. I can't cheat. I ain't going to be cussing. I'm not going to be covering and stuff. You know why? I'm not going to go out angry, amen, with, with anger, with envy, with jealousy in my heart. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. I'm not doing all those things because that's going to clog up my pipeline. Got it? It's going to clog me up. Amen, amen. So in other words, uh, we got full control, not what comes our way, but our response, and that's the key. God leaves everything in our hand, Amen. And so the Bible says, remember 1 John uh, uh, 5 and 14, he said, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. Listen to this. If we ask anything according to his will. So watch this. People can say, well, I, I can't ask God for anything according to his will. If he knows that he hears us, then whatever we ask, we know that we have uh, what we have asked of him. Watch it. I got to ask according to his will. Can't just ask anything. It's got to be according to his will, which means not only I'm asking in agreement with God's will, but I'm also asking from a place of righteousness. I need you to get that tonight because that's the whole point. I'm going to bring this in. Asking according to his will means not only asking in agreement with God's will, so I can be inside the will of God. Uh, God yeah, what I'm asking you for is, is, is scripture. That's basically what, what he's saying. It's in scripture. But watch this. Not only has it be it has to be in scripture, which is his will, but also it's from a place. Everybody shot from a place. Uh, from a place of righteous positioning. Because righteousness is always God's will. What you mean, Pastor? I can't be asking God all this stuff, and then I'm not meeting his standards of his righteousness. That's what I'm saying. So I got to be right with God. So I can't be messing around having these alts and these issues with people. Oh, I quit. I ain't doing that no more. How you quit? You ain't right with God. Come on, listen to something. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't been to church since the third Sunday three years ago. Hallelujah. See, I got to be right. I can't be cussing last night. I'm partying at the club last night, cutting the food, acting up with no righteousness. And then I'm like, oh, God, oh, Jesus, yeah, yeah, Lord. No, you're not properly aligned. You have to have proper alignment with the with him. Amen. 
So God, so that's the key. You want to understand why things are not working out for you? Well, you're not properly aligned. You're out of an alignment. Just like a car goes in for service, you need to go into repentant mode. That means to change your mind or return to your original mind. Amen. Your original, my original mind. In other words, God, you are right and I am wrong. That's the key. God, you are right and I am wrong. God, you are right and I am wrong. That's the key. Amen. And so we have to begin to look at it. Amen. We have to have a, we have a clear promise that whatever we pray, uh, pray from the position of righteousness, God will answer us when we pray from the position of righteousness. Because I think, oh, just because you're praying, you don't get an answer. No, you're not. You've got to be from a position of being right with authority. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is just, hey, look, just get right. Shop, get right. Yeah, you got to get right. Amen. So watch this over here in Psalms 34, 17 through 22. It says, now, a righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He protects all of his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servants. No one be, will be condemned who takes refuge in him. As long as we are properly aligned with God, he will deliver us out of all trouble. If you're not properly aligned with God, he's not delivering you out of trouble, baby. It's just not happening. You have misinterpreted the scripture. Shot kingdom living. I'm showing you how to keep your flow going. Amen. From the kingdom of God, from his system of government. Amen. So as long as we're aligned uh, properly with God, he'll deliver us out of all our troubles. Amen. This does not mean that we'll never experience troubles in our life, but it does mean we can trust God to carry us through it and give us the strength and the grace to prevail in it. Because we're going to have some issues, but God said, uh, uh it will not prevail uh, uh, over you. Man, I can give a whole testimony tonight how God will prevail through hard times, through difficult times. He'll prevail with you, man. He'll be there with you. Amen. Glory to God. And because God, the bottom line, God ain't going to leave you to fend for yourself. He'll fight your battles. I'm telling you, he'll fight your battles. Amen. And notice he said in verse number 20, God promises that he will protect you. In other words, God will protect the bones of the righteous. Which that doesn't mean that you won't have no bones broken. That uh, uh, what David was really talking about, he was talking metaphorically uh, about it. This is not a promise for protection against, you know, your bones being broken. But the word bones here refers to the framework. Every shot framework. The framework that holds everything together, like the bones in your body, holds the whole body together. What God said is you're going to have some affliction, some problems inside of life, but just like the skeletal, uh, uh, your, the skeletal system in your body, 206 bone. He said, now, it keeps the body together. He said, likewise, you're going to be kept the framework of you. It's going to be held together. I don't care how much stuff you go through, every, no matter what you deal with, you will not have the framework will not break. Glory be to God. Because he's picked you up and he set you down on solid ground. That's what God said. Because you are his righteousness. He said, now I'm the support system. What is God's support system? The kingdom of God is his support system. And he says, it's not going to break down. It's going to show you. And Pastor Vanessa just taught on this on Sunday. It's going to allow you to break through on the inside of your life. Amen and amen. And guess what, y'all? I'm out of time. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank God for y'all tonight. Amen. Listen, it was a true pleasure. Amen. I see that my clock is, is came on and my time is ended, but I want to thank God for each and every last one of you. Amen. Listen, go back and play it again. Take notes. Listen to it. I'm only just, God's giving me, continue to build on, continue to build on onto lesson after lesson so that your life can be so much better. And I promise you, as you continue to get this word on the inside of your heart, the Bible declares, I hear this word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Listen, okay? I may can't quote all of the word, but I show sure up can live it. That's the key. Can you live this? Praise be to God. Amen. Get a lot of hand praise today. Yeah, man. Yeah, someone says anything can happen. Uh-huh. It can happen in you because of the kingdom. You're from another place and the kingdom of God is in your life. Let's pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every person tonight that had an opportunity to hear the word that's gone forth. 
They got their life. They, they don't live the kingdom way. It's no longer the, the, the standards of the world. But no, no, we live, we got, we got a different rule, different government that we function from. And in this kingdom, where I'm from, these are the standards. And I'm going to stay in the faith because that's my kingdom language. And once, guess what? Your life's going to be totally different. And when people turn around and see you, they're going to be amazed at what God has done in your life. So, Father, I thank you tonight for the word of God touching base in every place all over their lives, throughout their whole uh, uh, household, falling on amazing ground. And, God, we just believe in this. Everything's going to go well on the inside of their life. And even in the challenges they have, they will overcome those things in the name of Jesus every day. They'll overcome it because of the kingdom. And God, I pray tonight that your people that are called by your name are going to humble themselves and pray and stay right with authority because you're properly aligned. Seek you first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and you watch all this stuff happen on the inside of your life. And Father, we give you the praise tonight. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Let about shout, amen. <laughs> God bless you, man. Oh, my God. God bless each and every last one of you tonight. Listen, I want to challenge each and every last one of you. Hey, man, this Sunday we'll be live, of course, uh, starting at 11, a 11 a.m., amen. Uh, we do praise and worship at 1030, but 11 a.m. live online for social media, amen. We want to thank God for you. Go ahead, listen, get somebody, tag, share with somebody, man, invite them in to be in the place on Sunday, amen. We'll be live, and they can be a part of that because I'm telling you, we're building up. We continue to add on. I don't want you to miss anything. I'm petitioning to you tonight because it's going to, when you get this revelation, and God is revealing so much for you to prosper inside of your life, for you can be a kingdom citizen, man. I'm telling you, and enjoy full benefit, all of the guarantees. I never, 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 never look back again. Once I've entered, I found out everything about, about God. Amen. So God bless you tonight, man. What an extreme pleasure. I am Pastor O. Amen. Pastor Orlando Grimsby. We have faith at the Christian Center. On behalf of myself and Pastor Vanessa Grimsby, we want to thank each and every last one of you. God bless you. Have an incredible week. And we look forward to seeing you on this Sunday. Amen. We really do. And listen. You keep doing what you're supposed to do. Watch God do it. He'll do it. And you'll be amazed at what God can do. What he's done for one, he'll do for another. And I'm a testimony that God will do it from ground zero all the way up. He'll do amazing things in your life. It's something good of the, it's going to happen in your life. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you this Sunday.